Everybody got it? You got to say amen. 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 Uh, Mr. Gerard, you read from verse 20. Uh, through verse 20. We're going to deal with verse 22 through 26 tonight. Amen. We're going to be talking about the mountain moving faith. Amen. Because in the word of God, it says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. So we're dealing with it. The fruit of the Spirit called faith. And tonight, we're dealing with the mountain moving faith. Amen. Mr. Gerard, read from verse 20 through 26. And in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter called to remember and said unto, said unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou uh, cursed it is uh, withered away. And Jesus answered said unto him, Have faith in God, for verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he said. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. And when ye stand praying, forgive, if, if ye have aught against any, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. But if ye do not forgive, neither will your Father, which is in heaven, forgive your trespasses. Amen. Uh, in, in this passage right here, uh, we see the power of uh, speaking the word, the power of declaring the word. Uh, and like I said, we're going to deal with verse 22 through 26. But in verse 20, uh, the first thing that happened the day before Jesus had saw a tree and it wasn't bearing fruit. And so he spoke to the tree. And told her that it wasn't going to bear no more, no more fruit anymore. And so the next day as they was passing by, uh, Peter saw that that very tree that Jesus spoke to had withered up. And Peter said, uh, Master, the tree that you're cursing had withered up. And the note that I put there, uh, did anybody taking notes, was in verse 20 and 21, Jesus saw what he said come to pass. He saw what he said come to pass. And if you're going to have mountain open faith, you're going to have to be able to speak some things with conviction. And those things that you're saying, you're going to have to believe that God's going to honor your words. Amen. And I say this, I'm just thinking about Uncle John, as you know, words have so much power. I don't know how many years y'all been married, but y'all didn't nod y'all head when y'all got married. Y'all said, I do. Amen. You can't seal a deal without words. Amen. And a lot of times we say we have faith, but we ain't saying nothing. Amen. And so here we have in this text uh, in Mark 11, 22, Jesus said, and have faith in God. And so if you're going to have mountain moving faith, the first thing you need to know that my faith must be in the right place. Amen. My faith must be in the right place. And, and if you, if what I'm saying is my faith must be in God. Amen. Uh, for me personally, I look at it like this here. When I was locked up in jail, I had a lot of paperwork that used to come to me that looked like that I was going to get out. And I began to trust that paperwork, and God saw that I wasn't trusting him, Sarah, but I was trusting that paperwork. So God allowed all that to fail for me to line my faith up in him. And a lot of times we say that we have our faith in God, but our faith sometimes is in things. Amen. And so, uh, Along with that, in Mark 11, 22, in Deuteronomy 32, 9 through 14, you don't have to look here. God knows, Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 9 through 14, you can write this down in your notes. God knows if our trust is in him and his word or if it's in something else. God knows, Katera, that if my trust is in him or in something else. The reason I say that, because he said, I led them in the wilderness to see if there was an idol God with them or not. What he's saying, I led them that way to see who they were trusting. Amen. And so we're talking about mountain moving faith. And here in verse 23, amen, it says, well, Verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say, somebody say, say. Say. That word there, the first time you see it in this, in this scripture, it means lego, L-E-G-O. That means to tell, to command, to set something in motion. 
Uh, if I can give you an illustration of when we were young, we used to go to the most boring thing that they call a theme park, which wasn't a theme park to me. Cypress Gardens. <laughs> they changed the name to Legoland now. Amen. And the word Lego is when you get these plastic blocks and you imagine something, Lord, have mercy. You imagine something in your mind and you begin to create it with blocks. The word of God is your blocks to build the things. Amen. And, and these Legos, uh, I'm not really good with a Lego, but you know how you thought you were going to make a car? Or you thought you were going to use those same Legos to make a house? Amen. But you got to know that I'm going to use this to build. And God is saying with my word, you can build that thing that you're desiring, but you got to continue to use my word. And the same word that will heal you is the same word that will deliver you. There's nobody that goes and throw away the blocks, the Lego blocks, when they're ready to build a house. No, they take them down and they begin to use them for something else. Amen. And so here he says, for verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say, that means you're opening your mouth, speaking into the existence, that thing that you want to come to pass. Amen. And I was sitting here today, uh, earlier today, and I was praying, and I said, Lord, how can I give an illustration of this? And the Lord said, <coughs> if you're going to pray for something, you can't get up after you pray and start saying something else. Mm -hmm. If I'm going to ask God to get me out of jail, once I get up on my knees, I'm going to begin to speak and declare, Lord, I thank you for delivering me. Right, right. I'm not going to get up and say, I thank so the devil is a liar. I'm going to speak it until I believe it. I don't care who else around me. And I know when I was in that door, Lord John, they used to be like, why he walking around talking? I ain't just talking. I'm trying to speak myself out of here. Yeah. Because the fact is that I'm going to be in here for a while. But the truth says that a truth will change a fact. Amen. But the Bible also says we have what we say as long as we continue to say it. 37 months, 16 days, I had to say the same thing. I had to keep saying it. Because they looked like nothing happened. So I had to keep talking. Because I didn't want to stay in that situation. So I had to speak out of that situation. So whatever you're dealing with, you got to not just say it on your knees, but you got to walk around the house and say it. Wherever you're going, you got to go around and speak it out of your mouth. Out of my mouth, have so much power. Uh, even one right there, I'm just going to. Here, read Romans 10, verse 8. Man, why I feel so good? <laughs> and, and to please God, I'm just going to tell you, your prayers cannot be answered without faith. Amen. I don't care how good you pray or how good it sounds. If you don't have faith, your prayers will not be answered. Period. Period. Amen. And as Brother Eric going to them, that scripture he says in um. Hebrews 11, 6. He said, for without faith it is impossible to please God. But he that cometh to him, first you got to believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. The word diligent don't mean just pray about it. You got to take an action. Sometimes you got to go hard after God. What that means, I can't just pray and think it's going to be all right. Sometimes you got to be persistent. Persistent. You got to be diligent. You got to continue, continue. Uh, Prayer is something that there's no two people should pray the same way. Prayer is a personal language. Amen. You can't tell me, I can't tell you how to talk to your wife. Neither can you tell me how to talk to mine? That comes from relationship. Some people call him creator. I call him father. I don't think he's not going to answer my prayers because I heard him say creator. I say silly. Some people say silly. You understand? She hears that. Do you understand? It's out of relationship. I don't pattern the way I call her. I'm talking about talking, praying. I don't call her and expect her to answer me off of how somebody else called her. We have built our own relationship. Amen. And in praying, you got to get to a point that this is the way I talk to God. Amen. I, I don't knock when somebody say 10 days before they get to him, but sometimes Lord just help me. I'm getting a bias sometimes that I'm in emergency. <laughs> Lord, just help me. I know he's Jehovah Shalom. I know he El Shaddai. But Lord, right now, just help me. Yeah. I ain't got time to call my prayer partner all the time. Look, please, Lord, help me. Yeah. And, and I understand, you know, sometimes I be in that room and see me be back there and say, Sime! She said, tell me why you calling like you're crying. I said, Sime! She hears 
She hear the intensity in my voice. Amen. But you know, sometimes I cry one way too. <laughs> Amen. But ever read that verse in Romans chapter 10, verse 8. Say that last. Say, read that whole verse again, please. Read it as slow as you can. But what say? Why y'all listen to that verse in Romans 10 and 8? This is what it says in Mark 11, 23 again. It says, For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say, that means open your mouth, unto this mountain. He's talking to a big situation, a big problem, a big whatever, whatever your mountain may be. He said, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, that means you got to speak it. He said, be thou removed. When you're functioning in faith, you don't just say, I'm praying for this mountain. You, you got the power and the authority to move that mountain. You got to know that in my mouth, God has released into me the power and authority to tell this mountain where to go. I know that sounds crazy, but we shared a few weeks ago that speaking and talking like that is a process. It takes time. Amen. Like a child riding a bicycle. Amen. They'll just get on and go and get comforted. So you got to get to a point where I believe God can heal me. I believe God can deliver me. And then the more you pray and the more you see him doing stuff, I don't want to say it like you want to say You get a little confidence almost cocking in your prayers. Maybe that was a bad word. But Jesus said, Father, I thank thee that thou hearest me. And I know that you hearest me always. That's confidence. Yeah. That you know that when I pray, there ain't no else. This is not in the Bible, but I believe this. I would not get down on my knees and pray if I didn't thank God for hear me. I wouldn't even waste the time to pray. I ain't just going to be with no, sleep up longer. I ain't just going to get up and get down there and say, I don't want to know. I just lay on down. I would not pray if I didn't thank God was going to answer my prayers. God has power to do anything. You cannot scare God on what you pray. Amen. But the scripture says right here that you shall say to this mountain, be thou removed and cast into the sea. He's speaking. He's telling. He's not thinking it. Shall not doubt in his what? Don't just say it out your mouth if you ain't believing it. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because a lot of times, and I shared this a few weeks ago uh, when I used to work in public. Uh, some of us come on out in the mixed room and say, that's all you have to do is name and claim it. And I ain't say nothing. All you got to do is name and claim it, that right? If you asking me if that's all it takes, you ain't sure. If it takes me telling you that that's all you have, you ain't sure. Because you're waiting on me to say something. If you have the faith as the grain of a mustard seed, he ain't say the whole mustard seed. All you need is a grain. Amen. And once you start operating that, God can work with a little. Amen. He says, so shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe those things which he said. And that word, don't say say no more. It has the T-H at the end. And what he's saying, once you start praying for something, you got to speak that thing until you see it. Uh, I know some people teach, and that's why I say prayer is a relationship. Some people preach that you pray one time and, and God will do it. Well, that's them. That may be where they pray that. But I like to pray for something until I see it. I prayed for 37 months and 16 days to get out. Almost, I was praying there a lot of people, but I ain't know how to pray. So, so what I'm saying is, there's nothing wrong with you continuing to pray about the same thing. Amen. And don't let nobody dictate to you how to talk to God or how to build your faith. Amen. So he says, but shall believe those things which he's saying it, which he can.